Welcome to the I Own It Podcast with Ben Reinberg. We are live in Deerfield, Illinois, in my hometown, Chicago, Illinois, today. We are filming in Deerfield, the Ben Reinberg I Own It Podcast. And we have an incredible guest. Again, we just keep racking them up, knocking them down. And this lady is no different. She owns it. And that's why we have her on the show. She is an expert in regenerative medicine. She understands the human mind and body. And let's get right into it. Dr. Denisa Rezin, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you for joining us. This is a special moment for me because I am in my former hometown, Chicago, where I was born and raised, and I get to interview you. And so for me, it's a it's a double whammy. So welcome to the show and thank you for coming on and let's get right into it. Thank you so much, Ben. I love the title of your show, Own It. I'm a huge proponent of uh, hyper agency, sovereignty and taking charge of our lives. So let's get into it. Absolutely. So I suspect that many of my listeners are not familiar with regenerative medicine and it may sound a little bit like science fiction to them, but there's been a tremendous medical progress in the past few decades. Can you share what kind of treatments are now possible for alleviating chronic conditions and for anti-aging? Your entire life, your body has been regenerating itself, repairing itself. The technology for good medicine inside is inside your own cells. That's what regenerative medicine tries to harness tries to do what it can to to kickstart your own repair mechanisms, your own self-repair potential. Uh, That's ultimately good regenerative reprogramming medicine. And as we enter into a phase of the future of medicine, we realize more and more and more that we need to harness that intelligent um, capacity within our own cells and our own tissues and organs to self-bioregulate, to self-repair. So all of the therapies that we'll touch on today are essentially looking at what can we do to kickstart your own power of self-repair regeneration so that you can live longer, healthy. And ultimately, that's the goal. Sounds good to me. I can't wait to I can't wait to come down and, and do it. And by the way, I want everyone to know that I will be coming down to her facility in Cabo San Lucas for treatments. And then we will do another follow up show afterwards so we could show what happened and talk about it further. So without us geeking out on science too much, could you share some background on how do stem cells work and where do they come from? And How helpful can they be in in rejuvenating our health? Well, your health depends on the um, capacity of your own stem cell stores to do their work. But as we age or uh, if we get caught in the midst of a chronic illness, those stem cell stores are depleted. And so the body has a hard time repleting healthy tissue and it starts to degenerate. So stem cell therapies around the world are trying to do two things, kickstart your own stem cells again to revive the potential that's inside of your own organs. Every organ of your body, your heart, your liver, your lungs has stem cell niches. They're all hidden in there and they can be reactivated and rejuvenated. Um, Or we can replenish the stem cell stores with new fresh influx of stem cells that, 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 that replenish all of those organs with new sources. Uh, Stem cell medicine uh, has been around for many decades now. Most of it has been focusing in mesenchymal stem cell therapies. What we do in Cabo and what you're going to experience is pluripotent stem cell therapy, which is cutting edge, which is whole body rejuvenation focused. And it's ultimately going to be the future of stem cell medicine once uh, legislature legality start to starts to allow that to come back into the game. What are some of your favorite success stories with your patients? The people that you've helped, what have you found most rewarding about it? 
Hmm. Well, pluripotent stem cells are able to signal repair in every tissue type of your body. There's about 220 tissue types overall in your body. And all of those tissues, whether it's heart um, tissue or liver tissue or intestinal tissue, uh, all of that gets damaged in chronic disease or over time with oxidative stress, with inflammation, with aging, all the things that go wrong as we age. Um, and these stem cells are able to go into all these tissues. We apply them through intravenous therapies. So they go into the, your vein and and are within minutes are in every tissue of the body and they're able to read the tissue and and release signaling factors um release nano uh micro vesicles that are full of repair factors reprogramming factors that are able to help that tissue to grow more blood vessels to grow more nerve tissue, to dissolve fibrosis, uh, to create more growth. Uh, they release growth factors as well. I mean, there is hundreds of thousands of different peptides and molecules that are in these micro vesicles that the stem cells release. And they kind of come in and release and signal, repair, 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 uh, rejuvenate, uh, reprogram, remodel this tissue. And they, it's just this inherent intelligence in the pluripotent stem cells. It's billion years of evolutionary data in there. It's, it's designed by nature, really. It's quite, um, quite uh, fascinating to watch. So what we see is when patients come um, the, in the first week, you know, the body's just trying to like adjust, you know, people feel tired because there's just so much information being um uh, circulated in the system. So the first week you usually get tired about 80% of our patients experience like, Oh my God, I need to go to sleep after the treatment. And then in the evenings they, they feel great, but there's a lot of repair happening. But what we see is the nervous system starts to respond quickly. So, um, there is a shift in, um, like the brain fog goes away. Uh, there is better, you know, brain function, you can think more clearly, you sleep better, usually, unless you have a chronic disease, whereas you might get worse for a little while because it's just disturbing so many, so the functional homeostasis, how your body has adapted to your chronic disease is now being shaken up. So there could be a couple of weeks of, of insomnia a little bit or unease or sometimes pain when um, the stem cells go into your tissues, they start growing new nerve fibers and that can create pain for a while as well because suddenly damaged nerve fibers meet the healthy nerve fibers and there is aggravation. So you feel pain in old, um, let's say, injuries, old uh, bone. When if, you, if you've broken a bone when you were a kid, you might feel that area in pain because that bone is repairing. So there is a lot that goes on, but what we see is nervous system starts to um, respond right away, digestion as well. Uh, we see in the blood work a lot of changes in heart function, in liver function. We see tumor markers going down over a period of two to four weeks. They come in with, we always test the tumor markers pre and post. We're actually publishing a study on what we found over a period of 10 years of how pluripotency is, in fact, anti-tumorigenic. It can revert a tumor, uh, to, like we're always forming certain little cancers every single day. That's a part of physiology, but is our body able to clean that up? Is the immune system targeting it and removing it? Uh, or, you know, these stem cells can, in fact, the research has shown that they can take an active tumor and turn it back into healthy phenotype, into a healthy tissue. So there's just so much going on in that treatment and successes are many. We have patients who come here for one week as biohackers just to get their body back to reprogramming itself, to rejuvenating age reversal. Then we have two week anti-aging reju re rejuvenative programs for age reversal. Uh, basically once we're over the age of 45, we kind of need a little more of that pulsing dose every day of pluripotent factors. 
And then we have patients who come here for four to five weeks who are very ill when they come and they need a lot of, lot of reprogramming. The tissues need to need a lot of information, start changing back to their healthy state, healthy phenotype, healthy biological signature. So you're very knowledgeable on the, on the topic and what it's, what inspired you to dedicate your career to regenerative medicine, anti-aging medicine, and, um, just share your personal journey with our audience. Oh, that's very sweet. I'll just try to make it super short. My dad was a surgeon. My dad is my hero. I always wanted to do medicine. And in my 20s, I decided to travel, not to go into medicine after I finished my university degrees. And I went to Asia and I studied Asian medicine, acupuncture, Tibetan medicine, Ayurvedic medicine. I mean, I wanted to understand what's happening healing wise all over the world. I understood the allopathic, the Western model. Uh, then I, I lived in Asia for my during my 20s and start, start to realize uh, the power of the body to repair itself much more than I would have just entering medical school in my 20s and just following um, the, you know, the pharmaco uh, industrial model. Um, so when I came across what STEMAID is doing here in Cabo, I was astonished. I, I've been traveling throughout Europe and throughout North America doing age reversal salons and educating people and starting to think that aging can be solved. And a part of solving that is finding solutions to rejuvenate ourselves on a daily basis. And when I found out that Dr. Brigitte Henley has created a pluripotent stem cell line, I couldn't believe it. I was astonished because that is billion years of data in these stem cells if you can, if you can um, administer them to the to the body and give that information, the body will know what to do with it in, with that information to self reprogram, to bioregulate back to being able to do its work. So a sixty year old heart, after a month of pluripotent stem cells, could be biologically um, younger and function as a forty year old heart potentially, and that heart beats better, can self-repair, you know, and has much more potent um, activity of its own stem cells. So, yeah, I, I was practicing in Hawaii, and then I was in Japan, and once I heard about what Brigitte is doing, I called her up, and I was here in one week. And um, this is really the most, I feel, comprehensive whole body rejuvenation program on the planet right now, as I understand what 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 medicine is doing, I'm very excited to come down and and, and see you. Do you do you believe it's possible that humans um, will one day become immortal? And how far away do you believe that future might be? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question. Um, are we, if we're talking about physical immortality, um, then there is a group in Scottsdale, Arizona, People Unlimited, who organized the Rad Fest, which is happening in San Diego in October. And they've been organizing this meeting for since 2016. And it's a, it's a conference, thousand plus people come from around the world, really listening to all the latest science uh, about what we can do as individuals right now to maximize our chances to live long enough to live forever. <laughs> so a lot of my callings are solving aging. I mean, can we be immortal? Um, there is two ways to look at it. Physical mortality, that means physiologically we're going to have to solve aging. There is also the world of cryonics, so that if we don't solve it in time uh, until, you know, you are um, 70, 80, 90, 100, then you can get cryopreserved and wait until science is ready to solve it. And then, of course, um, the Immortalist magazine run by Denora Delphin. She's an artist, transhumanist. Her perspective is on we want the human race to become immortal. Let's So let's expand that spectrum just from the self, the immortal self, to the human, the immortality of the human race. We've got to save the human race. <laughs> and when we, you know, along the way, we will be solving aging. But right now, we need to make sure that the human race renders itself immortal. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. It's a very fascinating field. I consider myself a transhumanist, a posthumanist, in the sense that, yes, science and technology, if harnessed in the most ethical, most powerful, most cutting edge way, can solve most of our problems. But rationality alone will not do it. This is going to require technology outside of our rational framework, which we don't have yet or it's not really available to the general public yet so what are the most challenging medical problems then on this topic that scientists are facing today mm. medical problems well we've got the diseases of old age um, alzheimer's dementia the first thing that comes to mind immediately is is insulin resistance and how how much glucose, how much sugar we put on our bodies that immediately destroys the physio the physicality. Um, so I would say we, we would start with, okay, blood sugar regulation, and then we would go into solving a lot of the age-related diseases like cardiovascular, cancer, Alzheimer's, dementia. Uh, we want to prevent these. Like, that's what we can do as individuals. We can take control of minimizing our chances of getting these. And the first thing is to get off sugar <laughs> and to make sure that our blood sugar regulation is spot on. And, um, and we can start from that place, of course, to uh, maximize our detoxification pathways also, because we're constantly being bombarded by toxins. It's, it's, Modern World 101, postmodern World 101. Um, uh, the electromagnetic radiation is going to be a challenge for the human physiology as well, more and more. So to make sure that we have um, things in place to to be able to deal with that, to detox that, uh, to neutralize that bioelectrically, and so on. What are I was wondering? What are your views on death? Um, I can imagine that the fear of death really motivates people and inspires people to explore anti-aging remedies like your institute down in Cabo. How do you feel about that? So my perspective on death or my how our patients, are, is the fear of death a real concern? Yeah, I would say your views on death and, and I'm sure what inspires the people to go after your services, these anti-aging remedies. Well, Los Cabos and Baja is in Mexico. It's at the tip of Baja. And in Mexico, there is this philosophy of three deaths that we have in our lives. The first death is when you realize that you're mortal. That can happen in childhood. Hmm? The second death is when you actually physically pass away. And the third death is when your name is uttered for the last time. So I think when we look at death um, in terms of philosophy and, and in our lives and metaphysics of our lives, we look at there's so many dying moments in our lives. Um, there's so many moments when, we, when, we, uh, when a part of us dies and is reborn, dies and reborn, dies and reborn. Um, the folks that get ill is, I feel, those that um, are challenged so powerfully that it becomes a death fright, yeah? And it, it's so close to that second death, yeah? Um, and that causes the body to start adapting in real, all kinds of ways, inflammation, cortisol, um, the organs start to... Uh, degenerate. So I believe that the mindset is so important around death and dying and realizing that death is a symbol of death and rebirth, death and rebirth within our lives, and just to become a lot more kind of playful with it. Um, and look, I am not in my 60s yet. I think the closeness to that second death is going to come a in a little while, but what I see in our patients who are in their 60s, they're starting to kind of feel the urgency. Is like, I feel my 
my bones creaking. I don't feel supple in the morning when I wake up. I don't have the libido and the passion I wanted. Um, and suddenly I start to see my blood work that yes, my cardiac markers aren't top of the line. My cholesterol is a bit high. I'm starting to worry. I'm starting to forget. So I think that second death, the actual physical death comes closer to us, either in chronic illness or uh, as we age in our 60s. And yes, it is, the death fright is, um, I feel, um, hard, hard on the physiology. So if we can learn to be playful around the concept of death and dying and rebirthing and, and use our mindset to, to understand the, that whole cycle, uh, it helps us. When we get sick, then we can have a bit of a more positive and hopeful outlook. And with hope comes good energy and the ability to get up and do things despite our pain. We take questions from our audience and one that came up was the idea of anti-aging triggers some instinctive moral questions uh, in many people about this process. I'm curious, are there moral ethical questions you get asked often? And uh, are there any moral ethical questions that you struggle with on this topic? On the topic of anti-aging? Yeah. I feel that about five years ago, talking about longevity made people, or immortality made people uncomfortable. They're, they were like, well, that's not really realistic. And that's kind of self-focused. Um, and it's really changing. Even a couple of days ago, Mark, Mark Hyman, and George Church had a great conversation about reprogramming medicine, longevity. It's coming to be a normal topic of conversation in functional medicine fields, in uh, integrative fields, finally. So we understand we have to solve aging, not just to live forever necessarily, we can, but to expand the health span, it's really great for individuals, it's great for families, and it's great for the, the economy. Uh, David Sinclair wrote a paper last year with two economists out of the UK really showing the numbers that if we can extend, extend lifespan and health span, we're going to save trillions of dollars for the economy um, just by allowing pe people to live healthy longer. Um, so the ethics to me... Um, hasn't really been a big question, but I've seen that uncomfortable uh, body language in people when, when I talk about immortality and when I talk about longevity, living to 150. Oh, how selfish is that? We have too many people on the planet. And then you have to kind of scale back and say, okay, uh, let's think about this for a moment. Do we really, is population exploding or imploding? Is this good for economy or bad for economy? And I think once you get into that conversation, you start to realize that, oh my goodness, yes, health spans and life spans are actually good for economy, good for society in the long run. Well, I've, I've been asked people say, well, why are you doing it? And, and answer your question, I want to live to 150 years old. I, I believe I will. And I want to repair my cells that maybe have been damaged through my 52 years old. Yes, I am 52 years old. And it's important to me to live a long, healthy life for my family. And as well as everyone that depends on me as well, whether it's people in business, uh, out in the public that are looking for advice and education on commercial real estate, I feel it's important. And that's one of the things that uh, I'm excited about. You know, on your LinkedIn, you know, it's interesting, you mentioned your passions for optimal living, okay? And for conscious expansion. Could you share more about what these mean to you? Uh, yes, this is something I love talking about. And it came through my work in Hawaii when I was doing integrative medicine in Hawaii. I had a practice in Kona. And uh, there was a moment in that, in that uh, professional time when I realized hormones, IVs, uh, functional naturopathic medicine isn't cutting it. The human needs something more to really thrive. And so uh, one night I walked um, on the coast of the west coast of the Big Island. One night, the whole night I walked and I, I asked the gods, please tell me what this is supposed to be about. And uh, came through this whole, like, 
I guess the message or the feeling that came through is bliss. Bliss is the zenith of the human physical and metaphysical experience. That is our birthright. That is what these vessels are for. And if we can live long enough and open enough, we can touch it now right here. And that's what, you know, of course, the religious experience talk about heaven on earth uh, and uh, nirvana. And ultimately, I feel that the birthright of this, of the human uh, and the sentient being on the planet is bliss. Uh, it's the flow state. And flow science has been really coming to the forefront for everyone, um, whether you are a successful entrepreneur or a scientist or a creative uh, you know, like a writer and musician or a surfer, uh, you know, the flow state is critical for the next level human. So I call it epigenetics plus bliss, ecstasis, eros as the epigenetics of, you know, the state that you need to cultivate to live beyond a hundred. You cannot live beyond a hundred if you are hyper intellectual, hyperfrontal, and do not touch the flow state. The flow state is critical to cultivate if you want to live that health span beyond 80 and keep rejuvenating and regenerating. So those are some of the talks I gave at the Transhuman Transvision London Conference a couple of years ago in Scottsdale um, about the physicality and metaphysicality of the future human really accentuating the flow state, which I call bliss and ecstasis. Bliss is the yin of flow and ecstasis is the yang of flow. And they're just different flavors. It's just a poetic kind of angle on this. <laughs> But that's ultimately what I feel consciousness expansion is essentially to be able to live these states in this, you know, physical density uh, ridden um, vessel uh, that our human bodies are. Do you believe it's possible for humanity one day to be living in a perpetual state of bliss? Do you think that's possible? Well, I'm uh, kind of in the same camp as David Pierce, the transhumanist philosopher out of London, who speaks about, um, you know, the state of the future human, also doing gene therapy, so we can maximize this uh, to live in this state of super intelligent bliss. Of course, we must. That is the direction we must go. Otherwise, we're going to annihilate this beautiful race. Um, that is, I feel, every physician should have that as his end goal. If you're a physician, that's your work. <laughs> Somehow, little by little, you should be like taking your, um, your patients or your clients uh, closer and closer to that freedom, to that physical and metaphysical state. Um, that's the work of the physician, I feel. So our show, as you know, is called I Own It and you own every aspect of your life, what you consume, your behavior, et cetera, et cetera. And you're no different. Was there ever, and you know this from the work you do, we are all works in progress every single day of our lives. Can you share a recent example where you realized that you didn't own it and you had it wrong and you fully accepted it? What was an example in your career, your life that you realized, you know, I don't own this. And what's an example? Oh, boy. Um, I guess right away it goes to my marriage. <laughs> I think that was kind of my biggest regret of not being wise enough to, uh, to, to be able to really own that piece, to be wise enough to keep that together. Uh, despite the love, um, I think that's where I feel the greatest regret. Like, oh, I should have been smarter. I should have known better. I should have been more patient. I didn't own it. I did. I wasn't wise enough. Um, I think with wisdom, we naturally own it. The ownership doesn't even come as a as a part of dialogue because as you gain wisdom, um, you just naturally live it. Um, so I think that's why longevity and health span is so important to me because I feel that as we age in chronological age, 
hopefully we also soften, we become more loving, we open and wisdom opens up and then we can make better solutions for the planet, for all sentient beings. Ultimately, in thousand years, when we look back, we're like, how could they have had like animal farms? You know, we'll look back at what we find normal right now and we'll be in shock. And uh, we'll judge that <laughs> in retrospect um, because we won't be capable of doing that to other sentients as the future ethical human. So, yeah, wisdom, marriage. Oof. So we're live here with uh, Dr. Denise Renzen and uh, really appreciate your time. I want you to imagine we're in Laguna Beach at the I Own It Studios. We have a couch and I lay you down on the couch. I said, Denise, I'll lay on the couch and close your eyes. You are an established, wildly successful, unique, talented woman. You are, you have the ability, you're going to close your eyes and talk to your 16 year old self. What advice through all your experiences, all the knowledge, the ups and downs that you could advise and tell your 16 year old self, if you can go back today and talk to yourself at 16 years old, what would you say to yourself? To soften and just be more open and, and follow her bliss. Yeah. Um, that's, pretty much softening because life and ambition and fear and pressure can harden you and render you judgmental. And that's when you become, you know, you repel abundance and good things in your life. But if you soften and you allow and you open your eyes and, and you just cultivate the flow state more and cultivate bliss and just follow that more, then no matter what comes at you, it's going to be okay because you're in the you're in the matrix of abundance. You're just like there is no lack. But that's a, that's wisdom, right? That takes. I mean, of course, there are sixteen year olds out there now that get this. Uh, I didn't. I well, no, I was always pretty dreamy and soft. But there were a lot of pressures that I I succumb I succumbed. So, it's our last day on Earth. It's your last day on Earth. And uh, we're sitting down and about to have a meal together. What are we eating? Could be anything. Anything? Anything. Cherries. Cherries? <laughs> cherries. Like a maraschino cherry or like cherries with pits like you would get from like the state of Washington? What? what? Like from the tree. Okay, like from the tree. Pick them off the tree. <laughs> like the tree that George Washington chopped down supposedly. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, do we get a beverage with our cherries? What are we washing that down with? Sparkling water. Okay. Wow. We really are healthy. But out with a bang. I love it. So yes. in our I Own It studios in Laguna Beach, we have a grand piano, a drum set, and six electric guitars. If you're sitting in the studio with me and we have the ability to bring in any musician or band, deceased or living, to play us a song, who would you bring in to play us a song? I have to be uh, loyal to my band that I've been my band all my life. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> a lamb out of Manchester. Okay. Lamb from back in the 90s, they became big with the song Goretzky and uh, Gabriel. And ever since those songs, I felt like they've always written songs that I would have written had I had the talent. Uh, Lou Rhodes is someone that I would love to sit down in a studio with. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. What is, so you're with the STEM Aid Institute in Cabo San Lucas, Dr. Redson, and, and such a pleasure to have you on the show. What is the best way for our audience to learn about more what you do and follow you and really get information on the stem cell and the therapies and what you offer and really dig in to say, hey, this is something I want to pursue and learn about. What's the best way to follow you? 
So you can find the STEM Aid Institute in Cabo at stemaidinstitute.com. We are in Palmilla Dunes, beautiful, luxurious environment right by the ocean, just gorgeous. And so come and visit. Uh, you can also speak to myself or Marina. Oh, I oftentimes speak to the patients who have you know, kind of difficult questions sometimes about the stem cells. And so with respect to stem cells, you can find us here. And I also have a couple of places online that I kind of deposit my musings. <laughs> I have a magazine, Bliss Designed Magazine. It's all about bliss and ecstasis and eros and the future human. And uh, just in general, some of the online programs that I've cultivated over the years around these topics are there and on my personal website, denisarenson.io. So kind of um, in those environments. Right, well, Denisa, thank you for coming on the show today. You are a wealth of knowledge and really excited to see you down in Mexico and start the treatment. Where everyone, I wanna let you know, we're gonna do a show after it to really talk about the results and what I learned and, and what the experience was like. So stay tuned for that. If you are interested in following the Ben Reinberg I Own It podcast, drop kick that lower right hand button and click subscribe, click like, comment. Feel free to follow us on all social media platforms. Go to benreinberg.com for more information on me and how we can help you with your health, wealth, relationships, and business. If you're interested in commercial real estate, feel free to go on our corporate website, alliancecgc.com. Learn about commercial real estate, how to invest in commercial real estate. And if you're interested in investing in our brand new fund, the Alliance Medical Property Fund, feel free to reach out to me uh, via DM or however you like to communicate. We are all over the place. So uh, thank you very much, Denisa. It was great seeing you. And everyone, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it is nice to be back home in Chicago. I love it. And I'm having the time of my life. And uh, what a great way to celebrate to have uh, Dr. Rezin on the show with us today. So, Denisa, thank you. It was great seeing you. And I look forward to seeing you in Mexico soon. Yes, do you come. Thank you for listening to the I Own It podcast with Ben Reinberg. To hear our past episodes and connect with Ben, visit benreinberg.com.